Fresh off a weekend split, the Cyclones return back home to welcome in Toledo tonight. Hello again, Cyclones fans. Everett Fitz, you back here for Cyclones TV. It is another game day. The Clones get set to take on the Walleye tonight at 7:30. We've got reaction on the weekend that was for your Cyclones. Uh, you know, you know, I, I think we played well both nights. I think one game got away from us on the scoreboard, and that's it. Um, we weren't opportunistic enough, and we didn't we didn't capitalize on our chances early against Indianapolis. I thought it was a little bit different the next night. I thought we were kind of getting outplayed early, and uh, we found our rhythm. We got into our game. I thought the second and third periods against Wheeling on Saturday night was the best hockey we've played to date in terms of playing the style we want to play, playing at the pace we want to play at, and I thought the execution level was high. I thought Glotov moving in between Peterson and uh, Akin was uh, a really impressive line. I thought they were fast, hard to play against. I was able to use them in a matchup situation uh, as young players, I, uh, which I like to do that early, let those guys allow them to fail in that situation so they understand how they need to be. But they pass with flying colors. Uh, putting Vale up in the middle between Vive and Schultz obviously creates a veteran line in, you know, in our league that can, it can be relied upon. And I thought those guys delivered and uh, a little bit of a tweak to the power play and it got going it, it uh, clicked at 50 percent which uh, we had a lot of zone time but we hadn't been able to convert up to that point so um, I feel like uh, we found we uh, made the most of our opportunities in the second game the first game we got a lot of shots from the perimeter and then I think uh, we found a way to, to get to the net and, and really uh, create some offense uh, at the second game at home and we had lots of energy and and uh, I think we played a little bit better overall, too. And One of the biggest surprises early on for the Cyclones has been the emergence of forward Spencer Dorowitz, who has a team leading four goals in his first three games. Uh, everybody here has made it easy to come in and, and play my best, and it's been uh, it's been a good start, obviously. I've, the puck seems to be finding me out there. Played with some really good players, obviously, and um, it's I just felt really comfortable so far and just hoped, hopefully can keep it going. No, I expect him to get 90 goals this year, so uh, right now he's a little bit below the pace that we were hoping. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'd like him to go after Wayne's 92-goal uh, season, but I don't know if, uh, you know, we, we don't want to disrespect the great one in that, uh, in that area. But, uh, hey, uh, I, I don't think it's a shock for anyone. Uh, he puts in the work. Uh, he's been the recipient of hard work goals and going to the areas that are tough to get to uh, to score some of those goals and he scored some nice ones when he's had a little bit of time and able to get his head up and shoot the puck so uh, he's a good player and he's a player that can play in a lot of different scenarios and situations for us. Uh, tonight he'll get a look uh, going up on our top power play unit and uh, uh, an opportunity for him to you know kind of keep that hot stick going hopefully and uh, I'm looking forward to see how he does in that scenario. The Cyclones were active on the trade wire this week sending the ECHL rights to forward Sean O'Donnell to the Maine Mariners in exchange for forward Mike Barnell. The Clones also sent defenseman Andrew Tessier to Adirondack in exchange for future considerations. Well, I, you know one thing at the beginning of the year is you're, you, you either admit and realize real quickly where you either need to improve or you need some slight changes and uh, we had to get rid of some really good players um, in order to to create and, uh, and foster chemistry but more importantly put guys in roles where they're going to be happy and be successful and our, uh, our 21 active roster spot is going to be going away soon we got a guy like Alex Weidman coming off of the uh, IR here uh, uh, in time for the weekend so there's some um, some other things that kind of were the reasons behind the uh, the moves. Uh, Marnell brings us a right shot forward that can play in the power play. He's got a lot of skill. He's got a lot of ability to make plays. He's got good speed. Uh, looking forward, and we're, we're really short uh, in terms of right shot, kind of power play type players. So uh, that was that I, we felt that was a necessity to improve our team. The O'Donnell one is, you know, he was a player that we had big expectations to be a big part of our club, but great on him. He earns an opportunity uh, with Hartford, and there was... No indication, um, actually, well, strong indication that they wouldn't send him down here, that they were going to use him up there all year. The Battle of I-75 gets renewed tonight as the Clones and Walleye face off for the first of nine meetings this season. Head coach Matt Thomas breaks down tonight's matchup. Yeah, for us, again, it's a lot about us right now, to be honest with you. We did some special teams work to, to prepare for, uh, for Toledo, but they, hey, they're a good team. They're a good team. they got a good culture there. Uh, they got a... They got a a mindset of that hey we're winners uh, and for us uh, our job is uh, go ahead and have that mindset you're not winning in our building and that's the way we gotta we gotta kind of uh, approach tonight's game and uh, we're excited we're excited the opportunity to get into our first midweek game 
and, um, and and really get get after what we know is an important rivalry and and try to get off on that rivalry on the right foot.